All right, so so let's get this series started. It's important to mention this is round three of a potential four rounds in silver. So mm -hmm. uh, it's best of five now, which you know really raises the stakes and really means the players need that extra level of consistency. And uh, I think winner of this round is probably going to be looking like the favorite in their particular group. Um, now, to reiterate some things, Tomate is a player from Spain, and he's one of the few players who on the ladder really likes to play mixed maps. So he will favorite four lakes, for example. So he's really good on maps that incorporate a mix of water and land. That's what we have here in Scandinavia. And then we've also got some other ones in the draft. Now, he tops out at close to 2k3 in terms of rank. And then uh, Dream is around 2k4 uh, and even close to 2k5. But it's like strictly Arabia for him. And uh, this yeah. is a Chilean player. So it should be an interesting clash of, of, um, of fan bases too, right? Because I think the Chilean scene is much stronger than people realize. And then, of course, Spain. You know, anyone who's doing well from Spain is going to get a lot of people hooting and hollering for him. So it should be fun. I think it's interesting that for the first time in a while, we see a Scandinavia where both players are likely to go to the same stretch of water. Mm -hmm. True. Usually they're they're splitting it out, right? And yeah. Maybe not, actually, because Dream is going for the house way over to the left. It could be part of a wall off, but mm -hmm. it could also be him walking all the way to the other side of the map. No, he's sending a villager out now. He's probably going to get that dock in the north. And then it's going to be Byzantine fires against Malian fires, probably. So remember, this this uh, is technically Silver Season 2. We're using all the maps that you and I already covered from Golden Plat six months ago. And I remember having deep discussions with you on players who, even on a map with three boars, are pushing tons of deer. Mm -hmm. And then they don't get the scouting intel in, right? So it's interesting to me right now that Dream has pushed in, like, what, three deer already? And if you look it's at Tamate, so he's already scouting to get yeah. that vision. So I really prefer Tamate strategically just choosing to go out and get the scouting here. But it's something that shows me the type of confidence maybe the Dream has. He's like, well, if I just get a smooth start, I'm going to beat this guy. So I'm not going to like, you know, scout as much. Dream didn't even... I, I forget who it was the other day. I saw them lose the Dock Villager. It was absolutely tragic right before the Dock went up. Mm -hmm. He didn't even go for that Palisade when he was building the Dock early. Mm, interesting, like he waited yeah. till the Dock was up and went to the fish and then went for the Palisade. If Tomate was even 15 seconds faster, that's not going up and you're down a vill. Yeah, Unless absolutely. you can quick wall it in, right? Like it's, it's so weird that he spent all that time pushing in, what, four or five deer and he's only now going out to the wrong side to look for the dock it's it's strange yeah and and we'll have to see if he can make the right decisions on this right because you are now making a decision based on what you don't see but the positive for him is that he can pretty much assume his opponent's going to have docked the other side but that's from our perspective we assume that he could he could come to that conclusion we don't actually know if he'll come to it um civilized though if we're talking fighting on water byzantines all the way right uh, more yeah. hp on their docks and then faster working fires so I think Tomate's plan has got to be revolving around starting on water initially. And I see a second villager, which is a bit interesting because the initial villager is still there too, and he's going to move her now. But second villager probably going to make a dock on the shoreline there. Okay, so the fire should be favored, but Malians, I mean, they do save a little bit of wood on the buildings, right? So yep. they can pump out more ships and his uptime is better. He could go for, because I think he's... I think he's excluded the possibility that Tomate is on the other side with his dock based on the scouting. Mm -hmm. Unless he's like walked out into the ice for a hidden dock. He knows that the dock from him is likely on the pond that he's already on or the river or whatever it is. Yeah. He could go for a couple galleys and try and snipe the fish early. Yeah, Maybe. it's an option. Yeah. I think Malians would normally prefer to be trying to combine water and land a little bit more because they save so much with their buildings. But this is just a straight up water build. So his... Starting Villager is going to go build the second dock. And Tomate is also making the second dock. And Tomate has walked this forward. I really like this. He's like, I'm going to have these fires like in your freaking face here. Yeah, it's going to make he it doesn't really get it difficult. Denied. Yeah, true. If he doesn't get it denied. <laughs> oh, there's a dock right there from who CL. His scout does not see the dock. He sees a house. He's, He's probably like, so oh, confused. Where's the dock here, bro. Oh, God, and he this turns is so around. important. Dude, it's weird from oh. Tomate. Like, to we, we talked a lot about scouting, but Tomate, first game, 
actually gets the quick walls down there. He didn't have his scout yeah. around. Whoa. <laughs> he gets the quick wall. I don't know why he made four of them there instead of just two, but... I well, now mean, I can take take the shorefish, maybe. Maybe He could have taken it, it before, I think, with three of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even a misclick, and he's got to adapt because well, things get awkward. Well, he probably also wants uh, room for the ship to come in to repair it, maybe. Oh, that's a good maybe point. Maybe that was like a super big brain play from him. Yeah, that's, that's a actually good point. sick, if so. Okay, so Dream's going to dock. Wow, he's queued up a lot here. He's queued up uh, three ships on top of the ship he already has. Early demo, too. Yep. Really early demo. But maybe to get that villager in there, you never know. Yeah, he's going to go for the vill. Vill leaves the walls now. I guess the downside of having your Doxa forward if you're Tomate is it's much harder to defend your own fish here. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's got the Byzantine fires. He's been pretty patient here. And, guys, this is when all the nerves show, right? Like, seeing what the players look like in the first game is always really interesting to me because some players, doesn't matter how many ranked games they play, they're just going to show some some awkward signs of nerves and frustration yeah does that does that demo go right into the dock right that would be a classic maneuver <laughs> but it's going for the fires it's gonna take it out still is a repair villager here from tomate and a he demo that a big one. demo oh, nice oh. that's a sick demo and tomate like look at the patient with the scouting as well he doesn't get hit by the tc and by the way dave like that boar is still standing there for dream <laughs> so like he's just he's basically taking two boars and push the deer instead yeah Really interesting stuff. You do not want to lose your scout here. The scouting for the other shoreline is going to be so valuable. And Tamate, who is the underdog, Ooh, he's, he's going for this repair. Cooked. The villager's getting cooked here. He needs to back up, but there's no scout, right? So yep. no threat against that villager anymore, except for the random spearman that is standing right there. Never <laughs> mind. I take it back. Well, now I guess Tamate could try quick wall this. He does quick wall around the spear. Very well played. And so far, there's been no significant losses on water. But I've noticed, look at Tomate's wood count, dude. Mm -hmm. His wood count is insane. And also, what? he has Going walled out dog. his deer. So he's making a mill at home just on nothing, just so he can farm. I really think he should have more confidence here to maybe take some of that deer, because that could be really helpful going up towards the next stage. Well, he needs uh, he needs the market, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... There's the market right there. He went for the mill first. He is going for another dock on the other side. So he doesn't need to go for farms yet. And he still has his fishing ships alive on, on the uh, the right river. Mm -hmm, true. Still contesting as well. Look at, look at this from a... Dream. Sorry to interrupt you here. He's going skirms because he thinks that the opponent will go archers. <laughs> He's like, I, I'm blind here. But I think the opponent could be going archers. So he's just assuming. And, and you just don't want to be making skirms right now when your opponent's got nothing. This is a really good build here from Tomate. Like, if he just walls this up, suddenly Dream is over-investing in so much yep. on land. But Dream is winning against the Byzantines on water, so that's pretty good. And he's going to pull back that one fire to repair it. Also going to try and block with another. Takes out one fire galley. And now if you're Tomate, it seems like the time to start maybe adding some demos or some more fires mm -hmm. of your own. I think if this goes Castle Age at similar times, the Byzantines just win on water because their fires are so good. So it's a positive for Tamate that he's got three docks up on this side. But man, Dream has really put his foot on the gas in terms of production. Don't he, use that demo. Yeah, he wastes a demo there. That Demos can be frustrating like that, but still could maybe find the fish from Tamate. And the food count is so low for both of them, dude. There's no berries. And here, oh God, the great skirmisher counterattack. <laughs> Uh, it's skirmishers. idling seven villagers currently. <laughs> it's working. It's doing more than if it was just standing still inside the eco. Yeah. Th Very that's nice. the nerves, and right? Like so many vills yeah. being pulled for this, and then oh, now the frustration of the skirm's actually getting in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Monte did not go for a ship on the other river, and uh, Dream is going to set up a dock because of it. But Tomate does have a villager way far in the back. Please. Do not fall into the trap of thinking, suddenly I can go for a sneak army because I already have a villager back there. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah. It's interesting that house that Tamate's placed on the other shoreline is probably just for vision. He's basically scouting to see if the opponent oh, docks. But Dream's right. dock is in such a weird position. Even he thinks he can fish there. So they're both just going to be freely fishing on that side. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the scrappiness and the imbalance of the economies here. But, I mean, we have some farming eco for Dream. We've got nothing for Tomate. 
And uh, I'm just waiting for Tamate to, I don't know, even sell his stone here. Like, clearly the balance isn't there to reach Castle. He built that market really early. It's weird really that, early. like, Dream has gone for farms when he's got that mill with uh, deers still yep. right yep. nearby, right? Outpost coming forward from Tamate, and that villager is going to be found. But the archers didn't keep chasing after it. Mm -hmm. So villager is going to be alive. There is still a hole in the back of Tamate's base. And I think Dream knows it's there. He does. He's yeah, aware he's on of the, the way. Hole. And Tamate, you know, he notices the spearmen's there and is thinking about this. And he's now pulling the villagers over here. And Dream sees the other dock from Tamate. He's Ooh. gone all the way around it. He's adding another dock of his own. Oh, but he's losing so... all of his ships in the original area. But he is going to pop out with the demo. This could be a really nice demo. Could kill two ships. Could be good. Could be good. Could be good. Could be good. Could, could damage three. Yeah, it's being pretty patient with this. I would have already Hello? ejected it, but he's looking... At his army as well on land, which will not get in. And this is Castle where Dream should pop too. out. And the up times are identical. Damn. Yeah. Yep. He doesn't pop out. Yeah, that, that hurts. At this pop. point, maybe you just wait. Because it's not worth it. So they could and... trade fish on both sides, honestly. Because I think Tomate's fish could go down to Dream's double dock there. Yeah. So interesting times. But, uh, you know, pretty close in terms of res collected. It's it's a small advantage to dream, and it's more food and wood, which I think has been the big thing. But I think having if it's just water play on both sides, I do still give the advantage to Byzantines in Castle. Dude, Tomate's line of sight right now is crazy. Like, how many outposts are you gonna build, my man? And as soon as he gets to Castle Age, he's gonna have Town Patrol too. Yep. This map is gonna light up like a Christmas tree, bro. Like this this whole thing is just gonna be visible. I think my worry for him is he's too all in on water. Like, he's still on one farm. I know people like horse color for their farms, but I, I'd like to see five or six farms here even without it. Just get mm -hmm. some other form of food eco because your food eco could disappear so quickly. And he's still losing fishing ships on that left-hand side. And if he's not losing them, they're just fleeing. They're not dropping off food. So the transitions have been better for Dream. Dream's dropping a stable in the middle. This is something Tomate might see. But the stable feels like a perfect addition, right? Because Tomate, being Byzantines, has cheap skirms. And he's adding the skirms now. Damn, dude. You're right about his food eco. Like, just the one farm. Yep. And all the fishing ships at risk of dying. Castle Age is in for Dream. And Tomate has Castle Age now. He can see large sections of the map. Still doesn't see that stable, though. One tile, literally, out of range. Mm, yeah. And I wonder if we're going to see a siege workshop, too. The other big thing here, man, you can't afford the War Galley upgrade with this economy. So forget about Byzantines having an advantage if you can't afford War Galley. Like, you also, need that for the fires. He could... I was talking about the outpost. He couldn't afford a second TC because he spent all his stone on outposts. <laughs> no! <laughs> he actually spent, like, 140 stone on outposts, dude. <laughs> Yikes. That's crazy. It's been a scrappy game. And the fact that they're yeah. both under a minute of idle TC time is really good. For the first game in the series you expect that to be better come game two or three once they're warmed up but advanced to dream sold, right now he actually might have sold 100 so i'm doing the math in my head on outpost he might have sold 100 but he couldn't afford the second tc regardless yeah yeah the, the math didn't add up for him had to use the market and dream he's got an offensive army he's got a knight there trying to break through i think tomate could maybe hold from this because that villager is going to be able to build the house faster than the knight can destroy it but the villager is the target for dream's army the second now, what TC you add here gone up but oh it's just the eco is just so rough for tomate at the moment yeah you gotta contest on water still yeah right you have to and war galley upgrade would be really nice but obviously you can't afford that yet in terms of the uh food investment and it's just kind of like you can't afford Elite Skirm at the same time you're going for War Galley. You basically are forced into a Siege Workshop. But once he's in with the Knights, it gets ugly. You can't really go Monks because he's got the range units behind. It's just a super ugly position for Tomate. Yeah, I agree with you. All the transitional stuff in Feudal has led to this moment. And Dream, while the eco counts even, he's got two Town Centers pumping out Vils at home. He's got the potential for damage here on land. Now, there's a hole between the blacksmith and the barracks there, so I don't know if Dream's going to have the confidence to run through there, but if he were to make his, his move around there, I think he would actually have forced Tomate off the gold. But fortunately for Tomate, 
Dreams just, he, he knows he has the lead, and he doesn't want to take any additional risks here. He just wants to camp that area. Still no war galley for Tamate. I mean, Byzantine fire galleys are still pretty good against regular fire ships. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and he's choosing to put all his food into more eco. But, I mean, the food eco for him is, is horrendous. He's now off the farms. This is not even using the farms. He's only got six on food currently. Yep, and this is where you're just like, this is where nothing looks pretty, right? Because you're under pressure, it's tourney time, and you know the third TC you've just placed isn't optimal. You know you don't want to be fighting with mangonels and skirmishers against random knights, but you just kind of feel you have to. And Dream, like, the, the best players should be able to take full advantage from this position, and Dream has mm -hmm. been pretty heavy on stone here. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's not far away from a, a castle in the middle of the map. I mean, there's some really castleable positions. You could castle the gold on the side of his base. You could yep. castle that hill at the front as the Mangonel. Kind of killing some crossbows here. Yeah, not bad. A little and sloppy from Dream. Or you could castle the stone at the front of his base, too. I mean, there's so many options. I, I feel like if, if you or I were in this position in Tamate right now, and he's kind of doing it, but I, I would have been buying food like this whole time. Just try and buy yep. a little bit more food for field production. Ooh, oh, nice he shot. lands a really good shot. Okay, but I love the aggression from Dream. I love the lack of hesitation when he has the lead. Let's run in now. Let's harass this guy. He was just back here with a weak knight before. And now he's going to head to the gold. And it's still just so awkward for Tamate to deal with this and to have the space for farms and to spend his resources. I honestly think he's done a pretty good job. Or maybe Dream just hasn't had the follow-up. But, I mean, he hasn't really taken any damage. Yep, And sure. he got the third TC up. He's getting his farms up slowly. <laughs> he's he's killing knights with the mangonels. It's, this Maganel is going to go down, but at least the knight might die to the TC. Yeah, this is TC's where this shots. is where if you're ever going to build a forward castle, after you see those skirms are cleared up, this you take it. out the Maganel, this would be the time. I, I honestly, against Byzantines, I'm always a little hesitant about a forward castle because they, they still have the cheaper imp. So we'll see if he does it, but just amazing he, control for Dream. This game has fallen apart for Tamate. I mean, you have full vision on his eco. Right? You know you killed the fish. Yep. You've seen the, the farms coming up. You know that he's probably not up to imp, and Tamate knows he's not going to go up to imp anytime soon. Calls the GG. Wasn't that far behind in village villagers, but look at the military count there. Look at the map control. Yep. Everything for Dream. Yeah, I think it, it was the economic transitions. I think uh, Tamate not taking any of his hunts was a very big deal in this game. Uh, granted, Dream, I guess, he just pushed some hunts and milled them much later, but it was also I think that was a big deal. spot for his deer. Yeah, like, agreed. You look at where Dream's deer are, way better, 100 times better yeah. than the deer from uh, Tamate. Like, those are disgusting. Yeah, right he didn't want to front. take the risk there. I think yeah. uh, even, even without just the deer, right, I think you can transition into some farming eco. Because if he has the war galley upgrade, I think he can compete a little bit more on water. Um, I, I don't know how many APM Andes are out there that are really interested in this, but if you look at the APM tab, does show how quick dream is i think we saw that at times right that is including the farms we talked about uh, some of the micro on water scouting on that left side where where uh we thought that maybe tomate would have control so good uh win to take some pressure off for dream and tomate is going to go to his home map now which i think will be very similar i think it's going to be cross most likely uh it's his favorite map by far tomate switching up the colors here i'm going to stick him in red again though same. He's going for the Viper Same. powers. I get it, you know, after losing the first game. Mm -hmm. So, Bohemians Bengalis on Fortified Clearing. Uh, this map has stone walls on the front, but is open on the backside. Usually, the aggression does come through the middle, where there's five relics, and then there's going to be four relics on the outer ring. In this generation, you have three over towards the east, and then you've got one down towards the south. So, that's something the players will aim to scout. But uh, one of these sieves, the Bengalis, is just super smooth economically. Not that the Bohemians aren't, but getting the additional vills when you arrive to the next stage has been huge. And I think it's fair to say that the Bohemians have one of the best early imp, mid imp compositions in the game with the Halbhoof needs it. Mm -hmm. But it is costly to get there, so I think I prefer the Bengalis. I think. Dream, are you good with this deer, or what's going on, bro? You he did, good? He garrisoned that he garrisoned for a while. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he went around the other side of the... You good, bro? 
Something that's really awkward on this map is that sometimes your sheep are just a little bit further away than you think. Players should know that if they practice, but if you look at Dream's point of view... Dream, just... <laughs> is this down? I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it. Just get the deer under the TC, please. There we go. Thank you. Finally. Holy Anyways, to complete my thought, look at those two sheep hiding from him behind the boar. He'll probably find them, but there are instances where you... If you're pushing deer, you don't find him, and the opponent does scout the backside, so... He should be good. So... Bengali is here, probably going to boom. I mean, I think both civilizations will definitely opt for eco. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think either civ really has a lot of aggression options unless they want to go crazy with monks. But what do you do here for map control? I mean, light cap could be a really good addition. I would just be worried if I were the Bohemians that if I sat back, I could be overwhelmed I by monks. Yeah. I think Bengali's is a bit simpler, right? Yeah. You, you might go into a few scouts and then just Sanctity Monks and then just grab the relics. Yeah. Like, and then your opponent, if he wants to kill your monks, if you have a group of three or four of them, is going to need a lot of units to do so because you're probably going to get the conversions with that armor. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's very, very nice. Now, Bohemians, you have a question. Do you go Spears? Because you're anticipating the... Uh, scouts from the Bengali spears don't feel very good because they definitely can't kill the monks and they can be converted really easily. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you have to go into light cap if you want to contest at all. Yeah. I wouldn't mind like in, in the event that you're going to boom here as either player, I wouldn't necessarily mind it, but I think with the Bohemians, you just have to commit to something really hard here. The Bengalis, because mm -hmm. they get extra vills, I think you can kind of do a mix of everything. But Smate being the underdog, just, if you're going to boom, bro, make sure those TCs are down. And make sure you're ready to go when early Imperial Age comes around. Interesting. Some players wall the outside, Dave. Other players, they just know that no one's going to be aggressive on the outside, so they don't. So it's I interesting like the, that we see the walls here. The version in NAC with the little uh, path around the outside. Where you, where couldn't, you couldn't wall, wall it, it to the edge, yeah. I thought that was that was quite nice, but obviously this is the one from before NAC, right? This is uh, the the, the pre NAC, NAC, and then there two. was, I think the original version of this map had walls on the outside as well. True. So it was like I don't know how many versions there's been, but there's been quite a few. But yeah, I can only remember two or three games of any of the versions where we saw a lot of aggression on the outside. We had some pretty epic ones in NAC, I think. Like I have memories of. I think like ACCM or someone going tower rush on the outside. I kind of forget. Oh yeah, ACCM went full YOLO in a game. I think he like siege towered villagers over to build a castle. Oh, that was TT. Point. That was TTL. That was TTL. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He went okay. like castle age chemistry because you know how usually with Bohemians people are just getting the early chemistry when they're all the way to imp. Mm -hmm. He didn't, and then he went hand cannons for map control, and he siege towered villagers to build a castle on Valis. I remember that was Bohemians Italians. It was so sick. <laughs> oh, and the Fatoria converting game. Oh my Can't god! Between that um, <laughs> was that that was Tato <laughs> Doubt, right? Tato Doubt. Yeah. yeah, I think that was uh, maybe in the playoffs there, dude. That was I we had like screaming score. like delete it, delete, delete it, delete it. it. <laughs> Yeah, that game was incredible because Tato genuinely had all of his eco on the outside. Like, he, he pretty yeah. much lost his main base. That was a funny one. Nice feudal timing here from Tomate. Whoa, is he that's... Gonna hit that, is he going to hit that FC or what's the plan here, buddy? That is really fast. I mean, this might be selling of the stone here, Dave, if he's going yeah. up this fast. Which is a sign that maybe he's not so confident in this type of map, but then again, he picked it as a home map. So, I know, like, I don't know Tomate's thinking. I've never discussed strategy with him or anything. But, you know, speaking from experience, sometimes uh, you, you pick a map that you think your opponent's not going to be good on, and you put mm -hmm. a lot of priority on that. And in my case, I tried to put a lot of aggression behind it. Uh, so it could be the same thinking here, because I said the one weakness of Dream is he might be too used to Arabia-style maps. So I don't know how many times he's played this map before. The interesting thing here, like, Dream has just seen, he scouted the whole base, and he's seen zero walls from Tomate. Mm, true. Yep. So he, he knows that, like, he's not playing this standard, because most players will at least start to build a wall at this point mm -hmm. at the back. It's very rare for someone to just play completely open. 
And he's going to see this feudal time, too. And he's going to be thinking, like, hmm, what's going on? Yeah. Is this a forward? Is this an FC? Like, I mean, you don't... I mean, we see Loom as well from Tamate. So he goes Villager, and then he goes Loom, which indicates his Villagers will be exposed. Now, he's not full-walled, so he could just be getting Loom in case a scout runs in or something. But he's this is a really good build. He doesn't he actually have to, to sell his stone. Food, dude. Yeah, he just wants to save the food. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> can't afford another villager thank you very much and he said it's going to be monks he's sending more villagers out yeah. to stone so he's going to go full monks and now he's going to wall up I like the timing I really like the timing like if you're planning on getting the walls anyway you might as well angle yourself towards castle age and then you can wall up as long as you have enough wood mm -hmm. Yep. for the monasteries oh the commitment's going to be really interesting here so Bengali monks, people see them as as the stronger of all of all the monks out there, but that's armor, right? And the armor doesn't apply to conversions from the opponent's monks. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, range. if there's scouts or whatever coming out, it could be an issue. But wow, interesting. Yeah, archer range and market for dream instead of a stable. So he might consider like archers in combination with his own monks, which I'm not sure I love, but it is easier to boom that way because you don't have to spend as much food on light cav a classic scouting from dream scouted the whole side didn't see a single relic <laughs> <laughs> and then tomate's got casual like uh location on three relics on the other side yep but dude you gotta with this type of build up right i think you gotta go for the middle it's so much easy okay in some ways it's harder right because the opponent's gonna be there too but if you control the middle at all, it's like, boom, you got three relics. To get three relics on the outside just takes so long. And with the starting scouts being out there, it's always possible you're going to end up losing some monks out there. This is terrible for Tamate. He's going Spearman now when his opponent is going into Archers. Range. Yep. But I'm not convinced on Archers, man. Like, even if you get Crossbow and Vodkin, which he probably won't, you're still outranged by the monks. So if there's, like, five monks... Two spears? Could be yeah, complicated. You just, convert, you just convert them back. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess that's true. You convert one archer. That archer's never going to kill my monk with uh, plus three armor. I just convert it back. It's yeah, easy. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, you know, speaking of bonuses and whatnot, I, I like the strategy so far for Tamate because it takes advantage of his civilization's bonuses. Having more villagers on gold just makes sense with the sieve that gets those gold mining upgrades for free. Yeah. Now, he's about to get surprised here, but I don't think it's the end of the world. As long as he doesn't lose his scout. This, losing the scout could hurt. He scouted the range, and he didn't see the archers yet, but he knows now that he's got to be careful with his first couple monks. Yeah. And is this going to be is, Siege uh, Workshop, too? Uh, is he even going to be able to afford monk production like Dream? Because he's going to be putting gold into archers yeah. and crossbow. Yeah, I think. I think it's, it's just so weird. And think of the crossbow upgrade. 175 food now, 125 gold. That's not cheap. And if you, he's got yeah. three archers now. If there's three monks, I prefer the monks every time. Yeah. Depending Thank on Mike. Thank coming in. Fervor coming in as well. It's going to help the villagers and the monks. Remember that he is four villagers ahead. Yeah, that's huge. Tomate. Yep. So that is a big difference here uh, between these two. And now the monks are coming over and the archers, surprisingly, wow, they need to run away. Yeah, <laughs> no yeah I know. No fletching yet, just crossbow. It, it feels so natural almost as the scout's going to go in. Sanctity's not in yet. Uh-oh. This could actually be kind of awkward here for Tomate. Gets one conversion. Uh, gets the second. Oh, God. Oh, God. And now they, can, now they can heal up the units too. The crossbow should win here. Dude, Tamate, you've got to kill those other crossbows pop. here, my friend. Kill, come on, you got this. You got this. Save the monk. Save him. Great He's micro from Dream him. here. Great micro from Dream. Can he get it? Nope. Oh, nice. No fletching, dude. No fletching. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And now he's going for another TC, and he's like, dude, I've upgraded to crossbow. I guess I have to keep making them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that feels so underwhelming. And you have to try and produce from three TCs soon, and crossbows and monks. Dude, I love I love the energy behind this all of this from Tamate. Look at him just transfer Vils to stone. He's like, I've got to be so aggressive to break this guy. We can't mm -hmm. let the Megalis get ahead of us in eco. Hussite wagons will kill everything here, right? Yeah, Hussite. I know like people are complaining about Hussite wagons, but they're really 
good to mix yeah. in with what's already a strong Bohemian army. They're really awkward to kill, and, and particularly good against ranged units, Dave. So crossbows would do like one damage a hit to them. That's even if the upgrades come in for Dream. And Dream is just... It's clear to me that he is out of his comfort zone right now. He picked a good Civ, and we, we know why Bengalis can be strong. But the eco balance isn't there. The idle TC time's really high, and he doesn't have an answer to the siege push that's starting to go stronger and stronger. I think Tamate might get like eight relics here. Yeah, maybe. This is going to be a lot. Like, he's going to get every single relic in the center. He has vision on all three in the north. Mm -hmm. We're going to have one relic in from Dream. Does Dream have any vision on the runs in, ones in the north? No, he has none. Well, he's sending a monk now. He's doing the right thing. He's getting the relic okay. in the south. He's sending a monk to the outside, and he's just prepping some defense here for this push. But I don't think he's expecting the castle to come in as well. And like if that castle goes up right in front of his stone there, it eliminates the use of the range, the monastery, and everything. But then again, Tamate, he's still one TC, right? He does not have a lot of food eco. So if he doesn't do significant damage, the eco is going to pay off in the end for Dream. So, an interesting game here, dude. This has certainly been awkward for both of them at times, but I think Tamate's sticking with his game plan, and I like that. Mate also missing the second wood upgrade. He doesn't have a horse scholar. No he does horse have scholar. Yep. For his villagers, which is good. And he, of course, he's got the mining upgrades, but Dream now adding in some more walls behind this. Don't mind it. It's pretty good. Again, he's not expecting a castle. He's building up slowly towards his own castle probably so he could just build a defensive one and try and reach the imperial age dream getting a relic from the outside and also healed up his starting oh no he didn't heal it up but it doesn't matter oh, against no. a monk he's got a starting scout out there just in case tamate wants to go that direction dream is selling everything oh he sold yeah he sold his stone and he's getting redemption because he knows the siege could be a problem, but he was not going to expect this castle, and, <laughs> and I love it. That gate went down at the perfect moment. That was, like, optimal timing. As soon as the villagers arrive, the gate goes down, and he can put the castle inside. That's if, a crazy aggressive castle. If you're desperate here in Dream's position, and you go out to try and convert a Manganel, you could lose your monk, because Atonement mm -hmm. was researched by Tamate already. This is going to be rough. Oh, and the, man the Manganels can stack there and hit the TC. That's perfect. Yikes. Though I would say if you can get to the stone, you got to hit that stone too. I don't know if he sees that. He should. Yeah, try and hit those villagers with one of them. Don't get distracted. Don't let T90 distract you from your <laughs> true objective. <laughs> Tomate. We need that TC gone, all right? I like the wall here on the left side from Dream because the middle is already an issue. You don't want the outside to be an issue as well. And. Tamate, who lost the first game when things were a little bit shaky, and he struggled with the transitions economically. This game, he's just yeah. said, screw Yo transitioning into anything. I'm just YOLOing it the whole time. Yeah, and he's, he's like, Imperial Age bound. We got Dream walling him off on the left side. Yeah, that's nice. Which is kind of, kind of cool. He's going to take that whole section of the map, and there's tons of stone down there. He's going to the stone right now. But killing the market is actually going to be quite annoying for Dream. If he really needs resources in a pinch, Tamate, just finish that off. I'm telling you, if oh, Dream okay. gets a castle easily, it's going to bother me so much. He's still taking stone there. Take the market. I get it. But take him off of stone. Dream's going to leave the stone now and probably realizing that that is going to be targeted next. And he's getting full evacuation mode, dude. He's going to leave his base mm -hmm. with those villagers and go to the outside of his walls on the right. Imp is on the way. in here. Yeah, Atonement's coming in here for Dream. He's what do you think seven about Tamate coming forward with towers here? Mm, I wouldn't mind one tower because towers are really helpful against the monks, actually. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he expects the monks because he does, hasn't seen them. And Dream actually has seven of them. And he's got the Bengali armor, so he could maybe swing this, convert uh, you know, a couple monks, and then use those monks to convert the siege. I just... The problem for Dream's position is you're never going imp, dude. You're losing your farming eco. And you have no way to stop the trebuchets. Well, he's got redemption. And he's got Bengali monks. And sometimes that's all you really need, mm -hmm. right? Oh, man. He pops out of the TC. Oh, Tamate's Jesus. completely oh, shocked by this. 
escape! Just get in the Run castle! Away. Tomate! Oh, and that's what you mean, Dave. Like, the, the monks have totally swung this for Dream. Now, he's still going to have issues with Trebs, but the atonement and the redemption upgrades pay off right there for Dream. That was nice. It was a, it was a Dream result. Oh, but now this but castle. Now he has a castle, and Imperial Age is about to kick. And like you said before, he's he's never going up. He's Even if he sells all his wood from a market that he doesn't have currently because yep. his enemy killed it, he can't go up to Imperial Age, and he can't contest this castle. Mm -hmm. That It's crazy what these strategies do, right? Nice conversion there from Tamate. But yeah, it, I kind of like... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go oh, ahead. I was, I, oh, no, oh, oh, by all means. <laughs> I was just saying, I kind of like how Tomate has the spearman garrison in the castle. I don't know if that's planned because he knows the only way it's going down is to like a siege elephant or armored elephant push. Yeah, maybe. But I, I like that they're in there. I I, like I'm going to just guess that he forgot that they were in there. <laughs> forgot they were in there, yeah. But we'll see when he ungarrisons the monks. So yeah. Right? I love how confused this monk is on the right. He's like, where do I go? And he's just going to... He's taking the relic. Oh, it gets deleted. There you go. Another well, castle. Yeah, this is just so well thought oh, out man. and so well timed from Tomate. But he's still behind by 30 vils. So the push has to happen. But it is happening, right? It's going to happen. We know this castle is likely going to complete. And that means all this eco behind this for Dream is going to be taken out by something eventually. The Spearmen, they're there. Watch him garrison them in the forward castle. They're overseeing the whole process. It's all process. part of the plan. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. They're for the elephants. They're the anti-elephant counter. Do they and have the a bonus against... being kind of denied here. Kind of, but I mean, Tamate just needs to chill here for a second, right? Like, he takes out the tower. He he uses a bomber cannon against the monk. I would not show that bomber cannon to the monks. They do only have nine range, though, so I think you can get away with some shots. Resources are looking good. If you look back at Tomate's eco, doesn't have the best food eco ever, which could be a concern, but it doesn't matter because he just needs gold and he just needs wood to make more siege and here. And he's Dream's take repairing out all the farming eco. Yeah, like, like Dream's repairing this the castle, but he doesn't have any units that can contest the army. So it's like he's buying time for the inevitable at this point. This is huge for Tomate. I love Dream's farming eco on the south. Like, that expansion to the left of his original base is really good when you're under all this pressure, but... You would. Yeah, I, I do really like it. Yep. I'm jealous, I should say. Because everything's right up against the farm. But, dude, you just... You can't win this game. I don't care how many villagers you have. Everything's going to get converted. You're just going to be continually castled. I think... I think there's scouts now. But the spearmen should be able to help out. Spearmen do help out. Spearmen were big, and this series is tied here. Nice little aggression from Bohemians. Super fast uptime, too. Mm -hmm. 22 vils into Loom, into go up to Castle Age. Spearmen, monks, I, I think still have to question the archer choice yes. there from Agreed. Dream. I think Ooh, this is like, like this is a game where if Dream ends up winning this series, he's just learned a lesson. And yeah. he can take that information with him to the next round because... The eco wasn't there. It, crossbow, I, I won't necessarily disagree with. It was but like he not having the monks. eco. Yeah, yeah. He could have just gone double monastery himself, and he would have been fine. Yeah, right? but, but, you know, here's where it gets interesting. How many times do you think this guy f leaves arena open on the ladder? How many tournaments has he played in where he's playing fortified clearing? I think this might be the first one. So that's the beauty of the mixed map pool. That's the beauty of a qualifier. Tomate, with his home map choices, I think it just hit it uh, head on, and he just knew... I yeah. need these types of settings versus player. And uh, good good stuff. I I'm happy to see it. Dream's now going to have two very standard land maps where he can use his crazy APM and speed. Uh, and I'm sure he's going to go for that here for game three. And I think Tomate's nerves are going to settle a little bit too. It's like, okay. I mean, you go down 2-0 in a best of five. It just feels brutal regardless. But you just kind of out-strategize the guy. And uh, maybe now Dream's worried in some capacity. Here we are, game three. And, uh, you know, pressure's going to be on for whoever loses this game, right? Because then they'll have to win two straight. This is the first home map we've seen for Dream. It's Kilimanjaro, very open map. And he's he's really, both players actually lacking wood lines. Normally, there's a little bit more wood on these generations. And the front of their bases is just wide open. Uh, 
Khmer good on aggressive games, but this map is very hilly, and it is uh, very important to lock down the golds and stones and wood lines towards the middle here. So that's why Tamate has chosen the Tatars, so they can use that hill bonus. The thing I look at in this map, like even if there's no wood at the at the middle, um, one like Dave Hun pointed this out to me the other stream where one of the sides is completely cut off by the edge of the map, right? So even if there's nothing there, you can get the wall down. Yeah. If you yeah. commit hard enough to it at the front, especially with like your houses and production buildings and stuff. I'm just usually looking at where the golds are. And the golds for Tomate are both forward. Whereas Dream, he's got one gold in the back. Yeah, I okay. So I need to ask your opinion on this real quick. I I think I might need to step in as an admin. Look at the shorefish for Tomate. The second shorefish isn't accessible. That yeah, that's a that's a re. Yeah, I, I gotta I'm gonna message them real quick. Yeah, that's because an admin. that is really important on this map. Yep, and that's extremely rare. Uh, I agree with you there. That's like a feature of this map that you're always gonna have those two shorefish. Correct. You can see Dream coming out for it now. If you don't have access to it, that's 200 fish. Very fast food source. You got to go back. Bit so awkward. They're making their way up. Yeah, yeah bit, bit awkward. awkward because I've I've tried to message both of them and got no response because they're focused. I've said what it is, and it's Tomate's option. So at this point, I think we just we just continue, um, okay. do our thing, and, and we just kind of adapt from there. I think it's one of those deals where if Tomate had an issue with it, that mm -hmm. Tamate would have would have paused and said something, yep. right? So uh, we play on here. Obviously, a it bit of a disadvantage for Tamate's those... food there. So yeah, it won't be one of those situations where after the game's done, if he loses, he can call a restart. Like, yeah, I, I, I agree on it. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's it's one of those things where you know I I I kind of did my best part to it, and he has an option to pause it as well, right? Doesn't affect the uptime. If you average out the amount of food he's going to get, he will still get more than the Khmer because of the Tatar bonus. So that's nice. So we'll see. Anyway, but, uh, we fast forward. I'm I'm at eight minutes. I'm just speeding up. I imagine they're going to be in futile making scouts in a second. Oh, you pause there. I'm at nine minutes and fifteen seconds. I'll be I'll be there in a second. <laughs> it's fine. And they are indeed. Oh my God, he's a prophet. They're both going for a stable here, folks. Imagine that on Kilimanjaro. Wow, T90. This is why. You know so much about the game or whatever. I don't know. Thanks, man. Incredible. I know. I'm, this is, I'm very proud of that prediction. Yeah. So small things here. Uh, the, the wood lines that you do have on the acacia trees, there's 150 wood, which might not seem like a lot, but that is very noticeable when you're playing on one lumber camp. So the double lumber camp approach for, for Dream is obviously fine, but uh, you know that's something to keep I in mind. Also, a love barracks. love the fact he added a barracks. Yeah. I love yep. it. Just I, for the I just... Yeah, like, people play Khmer, and then they just feel like they can't add a barracks. Because mm -hmm. why would you waste that 175 wood? Yep. But he added it here because he knows his opponent is going into scouts. And you will lose the scout war if you don't have spears to add in or defend your base. Which is usually how you um, how you use them, right? As we see big walls coming up from Tamate. Wow, big, big walls. Even walled around that gold. Yeah, Incredible. walling around the gold's really nice. He's transitioned into farms quite early here, and I'm curious to see how Tamate uses the hills because there's these little steps on these hills, and you could be at a disadvantage on that, and then you just quickly reposition your scouts, and suddenly you're the one using that hill bonus. Poor guy went for the mill on the surefish there, and he can't reach the other one behind. I, I oh, wonder no. if the I wonder if he can. Like maybe one vill could access it diagonally. I don't know. We'll, we'll see because i can't see the fish anymore that one guy on yeah. the right might be able to but he's gonna he's just walling up right now probably wasn't expecting the Khmer player to bring forward spears but i think even if you get in there if you're dream you're gonna end up losing your your scouts he's gonna try he's gonna run in no, it's, let's yeah, see that's probably not smart that's probably not smart right you're just losing all three scouts now he's like can i get out again yep <laughs> nope I was just kidding, bro. It's just a prank. <laughs> let me JK, out of here. JK, 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 let me out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, in the end, he does end up leaving with his two scouts, which is nice. And I I mean, I've been staring at Tomate's Eco here this whole time, and it's a little awkward, dude. It. They can't get it. Rip. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, I think he's fine. Dude, He, if anything, he needs to take more of his goats right now. He's still got four goats, that, or three that he could take. Yep. Yeah. So Dream's going to have to fall back. 
He's adding it more might, spears. We'll see how it flows. My villagers, here. sometimes they're glowing when they're chopping wood. Sometimes they're smoking. Now they're sparkling. Sparkling? I don't think I've seen <laughs> sparkles. Literally, literally sparkling. Is it, is it villagers just on wood? Because that's the glow that I have. No, they are absolutely fabulous right now. All right, well. They're sparkling all over the place. I'm happy for them. Glitter man. everywhere. <laughs> It's just it like have you ever seen have you seen the smoking vills on the wood line? Yeah, oh yeah, that's the only one that I've seen. Well, no, that and the little um it's like the, the it's a gold shaft. Glow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just the lumberjack. That, that's what I usually have, but now they are sparkling. Got to love it. It's not even just <laughs> it's not even just the game, but it's also how the game interacts with capture age <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with all these random bugs. So, okay, uh, this is really good opening for Tamate here. Uh, he's collected 200 more food, which makes me feel happy because of the whole shorefish thing. And uh, we're going to head up towards the next stage, Dave. And I I'm not going to lie, like, I feel he's like in not... in position, dude. Yeah, and not having camels when this map has just been a camel spam fest uh, historically mm -hmm. could be a real issue for Dream. So I don't know what his plan is to deal with that. We might see Pikeman as an option Cavarchers. for him. Yeah, that too. If you point. don't have camels there, then you're going to have knights running around chasing them. Um, we know that's a classic matchup, right? Cav yep. archers versus knights. And mm -hmm. the knight player, if the cav archer player isn't paying attention or if they don't give them time to build up, can do well. But once the cav archers get to a certain amount, it's kind of tough. Okay, so probably not going to be much damage to be dealt at this point. But we do have Tamate attacking a wall. A dream is going to bring villagers and just repair the walls and wait for his spearmen to arrive. The transitions economically have looked pretty good for Tamate. I love the timing on gold. He had the timing perfect there. I love how he's transitioned now to what's left of the wood in his base. And he shows the archery range. So that's probably gonna be cav archers then, if I had to guess. I mean it's I, I mean it's either step lancer into knight or um camel or cav archer, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think Tatar's Hun's probably the only two saves you consider Cav Archer with, right? Having uh, the hill, but also the free thumbring upgrade with the Tatars is huge. Huns have the discount. But, uh, you know, Khmer, what they wanted here is they wanted an open game where there'd be lots of scout numbers and you could hop in and out of your houses during the aggression. But that's not what happened, is, really. It's just a full wall game. So it's it Skirms or is it Cav Archer for... It's Skirms. Skirms. Okay. okay. There was a world in which he could have... <laughs> <laughs> like ego child it and gone cav archer himself i'm better i'm gonna go Khmer cav archer I what is your tatar's cav archer if it was if it was 2018 and his name was spring then he'd be all yeah. over that for sure <laughs> yeah 100 percent. like the scouting second here from range Tamate. there for dream look at or the scouting Tamate. here he's starting, starting to expand a little bit he did mm -hmm. show his opponent the ranges which i'm not the biggest fan of because it allowed dream to know and and make an educated decision on what strategy he, can, he could go for, but still fine. Like, Tomate can just play the whole game in this quarter for the initial part. Yeah. If he goes for a second TC on the gold in the wood close to his base, mm -hmm. then he can stretch out and go for a, a third TC on the gold in the wood at the back. If he's playing cab archers, that's plenty of space to fall back to, plenty of gold access. And as long as you prevent like a forward position coming from Dream, you can be good to then eventually move out into the center with your army mass. Yeah. Like, you can I play pretty conservatively here. An issue that you will run into here, if you're Tatars, is if you rely on the sheep for too long and you're not transitioning properly into farming upgrades, mm -hmm. that that's where things start to catch up with you. That's just a feel thing for me these days. It's just like the sheep's so nice, but sometimes you get the massive cav archers and then your eco starts to fall apart a little bit. So I'd like to see him squeeze in the horse collar upgrade, but he's really rushing ballistics. The university's already on the way and we have... Skirm's being hidden behind these walls for Dream, but Dream might need to show his opponent that he's got these Skirm's, giving Tamate time. Just I don't know if Ballistics is the right choice. Like, I'd rather have Cav Archer numbers against a guy mm -hmm. with full walls than Ballistics. Yeah, remember the, the mindset, though, right? You're just like, I, okay, I have an, an advantage right now. How can I make this lead to me winning the game sooner rather than later, especially as the underdog? That's your thought process. But how is Ballistics going to help you here? Yeah, well, he doesn't know Skirms are a thing right now, so Dreams, just showing him stable units. And he's been real patient with this here. Possibly too patient, but he certainly knows his like, opponent's should... going Cav Archers. 
he should see the lack of armor on the scouts. Like he, that's one thing you should be checking. Yeah. Right. And he just engaged against them. Ballistics is coming in without cavalry on the field. Though ballistics isn't re going to really do too much. Dream is expanded for that second TC. Still no second TC. Could have had that if he didn't go for the university. Yep. Could have also had a siege um, workshop, but now he sees the skirms. The positive for him having CA is he can just run away. So he's like, yep. okay. So we just have to make sure we take pretty good fights. And he adds a knight. Okay. So love what Dream has done here, how he's, he's sneakily expanded to the southern corner. That's something Tamate failed to see. Tamate may notice it in a moment. But Tamate's got to think about doing the same, Dave. And like we said, big investment from Tamate into the army. Hasn't done much damage with it just yet. Ooh, he's found the monastery. Might deny that. Ballistics, Ballistics. pays off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the, the knight edition here. I think it's very good. You just got to move away here with your cav archers. He loses one. That's fine. Just don't, don't be too crazy here with it. Okay. Getting a little close, microing like a beast. Oh my god, okay. he didn't take any damage. Yeah, Hang on a second. We don't have full armor on the skirms yet, Dave, and it's Tatar Hill advantage here. Yeah. Coming in clutch. Okay. Well, it's we... working. Yeah, so it's going to be such a good game, though, right? Because while it's done well, the farms are churning for the Khmer. It's been two TCs for Dream. He has the eco set up to maybe consider a third. And Tamate. Does he have any wood, though? Yeah, that's, oh, that's that's a good point. And he, too, is going for university, thinking he needs ballistics, and things are awkward for him right now. Yep. There is still that one knight on the field. The cav archers are chasing away the light cav. Where is the knight? It's in the stable. Okay. <laughs> he might that's have honestly... a great place for it to be. He's looking... <laughs> he might have forgotten. Yeah, he's looking at all the fights. And, dude, he destroys the skirms on that left-hand side there. Mm-hmm. So now only four skirmishers with four more in queue for Dream, and Dream's starting to fall apart a little bit. The, the pretty big favorite, if you ask me, running away from his wood line here. Uh, that's very nice. Into the house and out to save the Vils. But villagers are definitely not set up in the positions that he wants them to be in right now. Now, if you're Tamate, you look at your res, okay? You're pushing here. You're denying resources from him. You have the army control. You don't see any army from him. Do you add eco right now? Oh, 100%. TCs, or do you, you come it. forward with siege? I, I mean, I think he's doing enough damage, right? Like, he's killing Vils. If you're not killing Vils, I think you come forward. You've done a decent job, but I just... He's not that type of player, and he's in tourney focus mode. So you look back at his eco, and it looks pretty bad near that wood line right now. But he's not really paying attention to that. He's killed six villagers in this game. He wants more. The wood situation's abysmal for Dream, but still Dream has more Vils. And he has basically recovered from the losses he's taken. Mate should have kept one cav archer on that wood line over by the Oh, TC. this is oh, this is a big find though. That TC, oh my god, that is such a risky TC for Dream. I know he's got some skirms there, but Tamate would have his full army there right now with the knights, which he hasn't yep. brought forward. He could kill all that. There are the knights he and see... here are the Vils for Tamate did to maybe see make the a siege workshop. TC foundation. He did not. He did not see the TC Foundation. So he doesn't know about that yet. He's going to be pushing back the skirms. He will see it shortly. There are villagers out there chopping, and he can sit on the other side of that wood line, too. The knights are pushing back the skirms. The TC is not up yet, Tristan. Dude, and these this skirms is are so going messy. Down. This is so messy and so good, it looks like, for Tamate. He's still cutting off the wood line on the other side, and there's a siege workshop there. There's no res mm -hmm. right now for Dream. He's just got gold. That's it. A really annoying thing for Dream right now is y you could kind of hold against the Cav Archers, but you have to sit next to your TCs then. And the yep. second the Siege shows up, I don't know what you do. Yep. You, you have to maybe go for your own Siege Workshop, but look at his Eco Balance. He needs a market. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he, he really does need needs a market. a market right now. Holy Cav cow. Cav Archers still cutting off the wood line on the other side. 400 gold, but he can't afford a market. Mm -hmm. He's going for a tower in an ugly position over there that's not gonna help oh, you protect oh, that. big find though for dream like, this is what the best players do right they do a lot with the little the two like have finding some vil picks mate nice. still focused on the front and in this moment he might lose some cav archers on the left and there's knights in too there's knights in the back of his base too the cav archers are trying to chase that yep oh geez siege workshop though does have a mangonel ready 
But look at the Cav Archer losses for Tamate on the left side. And it looks like Dream is holding, Dave. He's really holding. Tamate's trying to do so much. And his eco is kind of falling apart right now due to the couple raids that Dream has sent in. I think Dream maybe... Yeah, he, he knew what he was doing there. He knew that that was the moment, right when he, those knights got in to use the skirms on mm -hmm. the left. But he's not going to be able to use that knight to pick off that Manganel. Knights have, have pulled the skirms out of position. The cav archers are coming in now. He's got to go around his house, though. And Oh, look at that pathing, bro. He gets a knight convert. He gets two... Oh, he should have just deleted the house oh, and gone man. in there. And that just so well-timed from Dream to have the monks ready. That monastery was useless for so long. But still, I don't think the siege push is going to be stopped. You still got nope. you still got two you Mega Nels, You still got a big ball of Cav Archers. And you could pressure the TC. But it's like, which do you choose? You, you could have pushed from the middle to push the stone TC. You, you could push the left corner, but that's incredibly awkward. You could push the middle. It's kind of awkward to know what you do. But I mean, certainly you take this fight if you're Tamate. And he's still getting really good trades here. Yeah, no armor on the Knights is absolutely hurting dream so badly like they're getting two shot by the group of cav archers look at this from it's dream crazy. he knows this is bad he knows he might lose the left but the middle is important stone. and he's gonna oh, buy the stone and drop a castle there i think you gotta drop it near some resources though i guess that's a good choke point yeah considering he has gold still available to him in the back of his base and stone yeah yeah that's probably good yeah and it's again one of those things you can't think about it too much you're doing a million different things at the same time but, dude, he's still scrambling. He's dropping a tower next to this CC. Anything to hold this position. But he does also have his own Manganel there. And Tamate's not going to like to see this castle. He, he would have wanted to finish this game already. Yep. Seeing that castle tells him it goes on for a long time. And as he's trying to reposition his Cav Archers, this is the moment for you, Dream. Pop out. He Manganel pops out. out. One, big shot. Two. Oh, God. Really well should... played from Dream to stabilize. That should be game, honestly. Well... Like, if, if Dream can keep his eco churning out vills and keep defending here which it looks like he can because the skirms are coming from behind the cab archers eventually he's gonna have the eco to add stuff in and tomate is just not gonna have anything tomate if you look back at his base really struggling to get farms down and he, he just gets destroyed by a shot from the manganel and the scorpions in the south as well everything's falling apart here and Dream with a, a, some dicey moments here, but really nice hold. He's done a great job to reposition against the aggression, and this is all worth it for him. Skirms against the Cav Archers. Scorpion's getting some value. I think he called it, Dave. GG's called. Damn, dude. What a hold Damn. from Dream there. That was... It really looked bad for him for a while. It feels like if Tomate hadn't added that third range for the Cav Archers, like he added that instead of going for a second TC. Yep. Or a third TC. Yep over to the side he really delayed that and then he's put himself in a position where if you don't do damage with this push even if you've gotten some really good engagements you have to just keep pushing yeah yeah he it, i think if you're going to go that aggressive it's fine but the siege workshop needs to come a little bit earlier and uh you almost need to just pressure the middle instead of like the furthest possible corner but it's it's really difficult to get that balance down and he was able to kill as many villagers as he did because he put so much focus on his army um and and not on that economy and and maybe that's a weakness for tomate as a player maybe he knows i can't macro as well as this guy so it's got to be all in but uh back and forth series here dream goes up 2-1 tomate will probably go for cross now which is his remaining home map and it was just Good holds here or there from Dream. I really think I would have preferred the Siege Workshop from Tamate to be kind of where Dream ended up building the his middle. castle. In yep. the middle. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't understand Use why you're making it on the other side. I guess you're trying to cut off that TC on the outside, but you're kind of already doing that with the Cav Archers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can give him that space. Like, give him the south, but you just do not yeah. want to give him the middle. But yeah. he saw the new TC and figured, I need to push it. But I think it just made life way more awkward for him than it needed to. Here we are, game four. Just chatting about the Portuguese here and how many options they have. And we also chatted about the Lithuanians. So what we used to see before was players would instantly send four or five villagers to wood uh, with mm -hmm. the Lithuanians. They had 150 food at the start. Now they have 100 food at the start, and it's 100 per TC. So if TCs come up later for Dream, he's going to have that option. Um, but... We'll see it. You know, it should delay things slightly. The Lithuanian build should still be quite strong. 
And then the Portuguese have cheaper gold cost on any unit they make, making them one of the best sibs for this. The gold position is really nice for Tomate. And gold position, at least the main gold for Dream could be a problem, but he's still got a back gold to work with here. Yep. Dude, this make me want Portuguese food for dinner now. Might have what, to... What is Portuguese food? <clears throat> a lot of meat. <laughs> okay. <Some> seafood. <laughs> a lot of grilled stuff. Okay, yeah, like grilled like grilled seafood? Well, you could Just... get like... Yeah, or you could get... Uh, there's a lot of beef as well, but usually when I order Portuguese food, it's like grilled seafood. Huh, I've never... Or like calamari or whatnot. I've never seen a Portuguese place around. But I imagine oh, we've got a we got a big Portuguese community near me. So yeah. there's also like a bunch of Portuguese like bakeries and stuff. Hey, near, Portuguese really bakeries. All right. Now yeah. are things twenty percent discounted at every Portuguese place? Because if no. not, we need to get with it. <laughs> Nothing's discounted anymore, dude. <laughs> the discounts now are what it used to be or what it used to cost a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need to get with the times here. Just walk in with the tech tree and show them the Portuguese tech tree, and I'm sure they won't it laugh. It says at you. everything twenty percent less. <laughs> I'm sure if you are Portuguese, they would give it to you 20% less, but Maybe. I don't have that privilege. So <laughs> I don't think you could you could sell it either. I you could try, but I don't think they would believe yeah, I you. I could walk in. I don't even know Portuguese accent. I just walk in and be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my people, how's it going? Sue! <laughs> 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 oh god. Well, the dream here. Uh he's gone for his early doc. But he did transfer some villagers off of wood, but it should be yeah. completely fine here with the timing. Now, old Lithuanians, they'd have such a big food spike from the early fish and whatnot that they would have the fastest feudal. And you'd either see really fast scouts or you'd see players rush to go sneak and dock the opponent's pond. I think with the generations here, they both are going to be feeling pretty comfortable with their uh, water situation because it's directly to the north for one and directly towards the south for the other. Sometimes you'll have it to the side, which leaves a, a wide opening for the opponents to sneak villagers here. So if, this typically means you're going to have them build up towards land army because mm -hmm. they don't think they have to contest for water as early. But pretty standard stuff. The main thing here is that Tamate is scouting much earlier. Uh, and he's going to scout that right side first. And he'll see that there's no dock there. And then most likely we'll check the south and we'll know that Dream is docked the south. Well, Dream has uh, nine seconds of idle TC time, so there's the difference with the Lithuanians right there. Hmm. Well, it's like half the difference, right? I don't even no, know. I meant from like old Lithuanians. Oh, to old the new yeah. Lithuanians. Well, he no, I mean genuinely, genuinely, yeah. He because he went to Fordwood right away, and I think he struggled yeah. initially. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's funny. I saw two straight games when I was watching through Rex where players got loom early with Lithuanians because they just did the old build. And then they were like, mm -hmm. crap, I don't have food. So there's need there's needed to be some slight adjustment. But overall, this is pretty good from Dream. And his scouts go into the right area. His and the villager just deleted active. the walls at the exact same time. Ooh. Okay, so will she get the second dock down? It looks like she's actually going out there to try and wall, but Tamate just... Wasn't looking at scout. He was getting yeah. room from his CC. Gonna yeah. spot the dock. Yeah, and he's probably not gonna double back to look for the vill. You know, now assume his opponent's TC is close. The scout should be incredibly active here. Both players have confirmed the dock locations. We do not have a barracks yet for Dream. But he's going to gold, so I think he's going to end up having to do that. But he's almost gone up too quickly here. Oh no, he's gonna sneak two vills. Oh, no, he's not going to seek two bills. I lied. He's going for the bear. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking. I'll Sorry. Just assume whatever you, I'll just assume it's the opposite of whatever you say. <laughs> he's adapting like crazy right now. Look at Tomate, too. Tomate's like, give me all the wood. Yeah. Uh, he's not taking berries, so. <laughs> oh, and we do see a vill for Tomate, but this is late enough where I think this might be a villager that aims to expand more so than to sneak. No, he's gonna he's gonna go probably to the other uh, pond. Although he did scout that opening, mm -hmm, true. so he might try and sneak anyway. Yep. And if he clicks in, he might go around the inner section of that wood line, which is probably not where Dream would expect him to go. And look, he, he might get in. <laughs> look at how paranoid both players are. Dream brought his scout to that wall area. Tomate's left it now, but he also brought his scout to that opening. 
So both mm -hmm. players really wanted to make sure they wouldn't lose their fish. We even have a galley for Dream, just in case. He's going to make a galley in the south. Oh, wow. But Tomate is indeed going to dock the right side. Tomate does not have a barracks yet, Dave. Like, he's just... I think he's going to be surprised. If he hasn't scouted his opponents going for Militia, he could get completely surprised by the man at arm rush from Dream. And Dream doesn't even know where his, like, his opponent's resources are, but he knows his opponent's in the darkness somewhere. So there he goes, scouting away. Oh god, this is just the scouting for Tamate is so water focused here, Dave. It is. It is indeed. It is indeed. Tamate says sorry. He maybe is apologizing to, apologizing to you. No, sorry, I Sorry, my scouting is not up to par. <laughs> T90? I'm guessing he, he accidentally signaled... paused and since we're watching yeah, no, live with the speculate, we didn't the... see that. He signaled the bottom pond. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I missed that. Okay. That would make maybe me paranoid, like, too, if I'm Dream. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's getting in his head. Like, Dream's now, like, super patrolling the galley. Yeah. <laughs> He's down there. Why else would he be looking down there? Dude, this is a situation. <laughs> I know players won't do it, but usually players have so little underneath their TCs. This is a situation mm -hmm. where you could just you run just right run by. Right through. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you deleting the gates? Okay, he's making walls now. Just run oh right by. God. Just do it. <gasps> There's a hole. Oh, God. There Tomate. Is a hole. He's fish it's booming fine. like he, a madman. He's he going to have he six meant it. fish. It's fine. He meant it. Traps him in here. Yeah. Okay. He's going to go for the archer range. He will need to wall that awful lumber camp, though. And I would get man at arms now if I'm Dream. He, he almost can't believe his opponents let him through here, I'm sure. But you've got yeah. a hill at play here. Just be patient, dude. Back up. Get that upgrade. And then go to town on that wood line. Mm-hmm. 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 He's not getting it. He's not getting it. He's, He's getting, getting it. it now. He's getting it. Don't fight before it. Wait for it, my friend. You haven't even seen an archer yet. Shout out to that goose that Tomate has brought to his gold. Times are rough right now. For that goose. Um, and, I mean, you've got all the options in the world if you're dream in terms of where to engage. Do you hit the gold? Do you hit the wood? He's going to go for the gold here. And the quick ones huh? from Tomate. Huh? The goose. It's not in time. He got goose it's blocked. It's not in time. Oh, this is such a nightmare for Tomate. This is not what you want this opening to be. But he hasn't lost any bills. We haven't seen either player lose units, which is very impressive. And Tomate does get some quick walls down. And he's got more fishing ships, Dave. He's got seven. But look at the scout, or the spearman, I should say, from Dream on that right side. That's epic to find that yep. dock and find that bill. He's going to find the bill. You can quick wall that in. Remember, he is 34 years old. So the arthritis is starting to kick in <laughs> here for Tomate. As a, as a 30 year old, I could tell you it should be pretty bad for him because <laughs> I know what it's like it's for me. I'm 33. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the scout does take out one villager and he quick walls him. Nope, he doesn't. Arthritis alert. I mean, it's not bad, actually. The, yeah. Considering the damage that could have been done, it's not bad, but he did take a... The, look, look at his Look at, look his at the idle time. It's a disaster. <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute disaster. He, don't he worry, did, Dave. He did kill the, the Spearman on don't the Don't worry. Side, he's going to know, and he's going to mark it. Yep, there it is. There it is. Drop the market. Balance out that good old eco. Mm -hmm. now, now, here's the thing. Dream isn't Walt, right? Um... But, you know, he, he's he's located some good things. He knows there's a dock on the right side, so he's got a vill headed over there now. He has a Fire dock on the left up, side, though. so he yep. can... And he's galleying it, so he could protect the shoreline. Um, he also has archers in his range, which he could move out at, at any point soon and hit the berries, possibly, for Tamate. But he doesn't oh. know how, the amount of range units Tamate has, and he doesn't know... How many upgrades Tomato has, and right now I think that Dream could be taking fights, but he's in the dark because the scout got trapped in earlier. Well, Dream is now going for blacksmith, so that's going to be his second building there, so he can click up shortly. We have Tomate finally on the berries with Portuguese. Yeah, this will be nice for him because he's going to need that wood and he's going to need that food, and they should click up at around the same time actually, as Tomate is pushed away from the left side pond. Buy and that galley, so that's a the, good addition. At the same time, Dream was pushed away from the right because he saw uh, the fire. At least uh, I... Yeah, I think no. he saw the fire. Well, the fire is patrolling, so it will be back. Yeah. Maybe it'll kill the dock. You never know when it's... Oh, maybe if it gets right into the corner there, it's going to try and attack the villager and kill the dock foundation. Or it just denies it altogether. Either way. Range units engaging in the middle now and what is a very close game. I think you could argue this is the closest of the series, but Tomate's already up. And he sold all of his stone. And this guy didn't even have a blacksmith yet. 
So there's potential for Dream because he does have Fletching. But he also doesn't have uh, that big of a mass, and there's some skirms in the mix here. So I like the confidence to take the engagements. But Tamate is going to be able to hold there. Has he noticed this villager on the right? Tamate brought archers there. That's such a good find. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Bye-bye. Dude, it's amazing how similar it is, because Dream just killed the villager from Tamate on the left, right next to that house there. So they both have played this very very closely, and it's 54 population versus 57, but Dream still hasn't clicked up to Castle Age. That's very late. Like, yeah. he should have clicked up a minute ago, yeah. probably. No farms whatsoever for Dream. You will run out of fish eventually on this map. No farms for Tamate either, but the food count's looking very good for him. And the ranged unit count is actually going to be higher than Dream, and if Dream has a single hole in these walls, he's going to have some problems. Dude, dude, I think I think if Tamate... Just think about how he's played the last two games, right? He's just been mm -hmm. all-in. And if he all-ins from this position, I think that he could get this win and take it to the fifth game. He's got so many archers. He's got good archers in queue. He's got good balance of resources to get the upgrades immediately upon reaching castle. And he's got the timing, too, dude. Yep. It's really tough. Like, you add, you add a monastery here, right? If you're him, because you want to grab the relics while you can. Against Lithuanians. Oh, we dropped the add town another center. TC. On the stone, though. Yeah, it is true. on the stone. So the all-in potential is still there. Yeah, I, I mean... And I, you, you have 11 fishing ships. I mean, you can keep two TCs running. True. Did get horse collar this game. So he's starting to... That's, that's the first time we've seen that in three games for him. Showing that he wants to boom up more. Maybe he felt like that was a weakness for him in the previous games. And he's trying to break through. Dream with a nice market. Trying to, to buy a little bit of time for himself. And he is going to be able to hold, I think. He's got 11 archers. But he's got to be careful on this gold here. Some of the crossbowmen are delaying his gold production. He's got a lot of food and wood to work with, though, Dream. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go Siege Workshop. Bod Canero will need to use a market, funnily enough, for the crossbow I mean, upgrade. he's got... He's got 350 wood in those two foundations, the market foundations. Yeah. Maybe you should delete that. Delete those and drop a <laughs> and TC. go for something else, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, what's going on here? Okay, Siege Workshop, he's just trying to plug that gap. Yeah. This is great for Tamate. He's got two TCs to produce villagers while he's doing all of this. He definitely will have the eco lead. Let's see how many relics he can see, too. He can see two relics on the sides. There's, uh, nope, three he can actually spot. And where are the other ones? There's mm. one in the back. Yeah, one in the Dream's back. Base. Two on and the then right side. one in side. the back of his base. Okay. So he can get four relics. Oh, dude, I, I just, I love Tamate. He walks in, he sees the Siege Workshop. He's down a game, he's the underdog. He just says, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going in. And honestly, if he camps by the dock when the fish come back, Ooh. he could kill all the fishing ships too. Dream is coming in towards Tamate's woodline. Tamate <gasps> has to realize this. He's got to realize this. Got to realize this. He doesn't and see it. He, he does pulls now. the bills away. He loses two bills. Oh, dude. And he's missing the fishing Three, ships. Maybe. The, yeah. the fishing ships are all dropping off the food. Ballistics will come in for Tamate, but he doesn't have his army where he needs it. And he also doesn't have siege, but he also killed a villager on that forward wood line for Dream. So things are really messy now as Tamate is just going to escape. And it's good that he does because there's a mangonel there for Dream. Bringing in, it should be two relics. No, only bring in one relic right now, but he's going for a second one. Yeah. And the more the more relics you can deny from Lithuanians, the better it is, as he's escaped fully from the back of his base. More crossbows coming in. Scorpion pushing them away, but he might be able to snag the other dock villager that's coming back. No, he's gonna think about taking out this crossbow army now. Look at the army count. 26 crossbows with Huge. four more in queue. And, and he's then on nine stone. crossbows for Dream. Yeah, and, and like, there's a lot of gold on the front for Dream. So if that gets castled, that'll probably end this game. Oh, he's missing the crossbows. He's missing the crossbows. He's trying to find them. He has a whole nother army behind that. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got military numbers out the wazoo. And he's going to try and... Why are you working on that palisade? It's all a distraction, do not dude. try... <laughs> <laughs> and go in at the front there. It's please. all a distraction, okay? He's got the crossbows on the other side. This is Portuguese for you. They can make so much army. And he does see the mangonel here. Tomate down a game. 
big moment for him. And he's going to be able to kill that most likely. But no, he backs away. I would love to see a knight here from him. Just mixing a knight would be so helpful. Um, Doesn't have a stable, right? Yeah, or even your own siege. You just don't want to make sure that you get rocked in the face when you've got a lead like this. Get redemption. Yeah, true. Yeah, bring a couple monks Actually, forward with that work. army. Yeah, and then and then you have stone for a castle. You have redemption monks to convert the siege. The crossbows take out everything else. And th there's nothing you can do to deny the castle. If you get a good castle foundation... This is done. this is so funny. Tamate thinks this is completely walled on the left, I guess. <laughs> there's a hole. <laughs> I can't possibly get in. I, sir, th there's a complication. We can't get in on this side. And then uh, the scout reveals, of course, that it is wide open. Look at the, yeah, look at the activity from that scout, though. That's the starting scout for him. Ooh, the crossbows have been walled in. Big trap as well. Yep. This is an amazing nice series, Dave. This is an amazing series. Tamate is getting redemption. We're just missing Sanctity so the monks don't get killed by the siege. And the castle will be coming forward, surely, on that main gold, right? Or yeah. in between these two, maybe beside the new TC? I, I guess mm. it all depends on how, you know, the next couple of minutes go with engagements. Because sometimes when you have the cast, enough stone for the castle... What you engagement? Don't... He's got seven military. Yep. What engagement? Well... There's no engagement that can be taken. Is he going to see the siege, right? If he sees the, if he doesn't see the siege on the front, he might be a little bit worried. But there's well, no siege, the siege on the front. On the back. Yep. And look <laughs> at his micro. The siege on the back. Look at him move, dude. He's forcing lots of idle time. He's pulling Dream further and further into this back corner, and the castle's gonna go up right between the houses, almost like it belongs there. And mm -hmm. if this castle goes up, we are going to a game five. There's no way that you win this game if that castle goes up. And Tamate's still microing in the back. It was crazy split micro. I don't think he realizes the castle is there. I think Dream is, like, fully focused on yeah, this stuff. I agree. He's made a scout right now just to maybe get some scout presence on the map to deny relics so he can get them. But now he sees the castle. Now he's starting to lose his buildings. This is going to be really you tough to come up, back from. Do you buy yourself up to imp or do you just straight up shift-click that stone and buy another castle? Hmm... <laughs> Maybe both. He's Maybe. going. Oh, he's going to stone, so he can buy his way up to imp and yeah. get the, another castle shortly. Maybe you just, as the crossbows still are moving around, and Dream's probably getting so frustrated right now because mm -hmm. Tomate's just been everywhere. But maybe you buy like 300 food and you buy 300 stone. You compromise. He's just bought 300 food. Come on, buy 300 stone right now. He's just gonna save the gold. I mean, he's got such good control. He's yeah. got army everywhere. This crossbow army's still in the back. It still hasn't been killed. We see Light Cap for Dream, which feels a little desperate, right? I don't know if it mm -hmm. if there's that many monks out there to justify Light Cav. He just cut production. Like, Dream just cut production in Castle Age. Yep. He wasn't making anything except, except some siege. He didn't double down on the walls on the sides, which meant the crossbows got in the back. Mm -hmm. And absolutely nothing to stop a castle coming forward. And now he's got these Light Cav to counter the monks, but... I mean, there's still 28 crossbows. Ooh, interesting castle spot from Dream. Also, Dream is making it. rams. He's got monks here. He can stop this castle with crossbows and monks. It's a shame that if you convert the Siege Workshop, the rams don't become yours as well, right? <laughs> oh, God, dude, no, no, no. Tomate, build the castle in an area where you can retreat if it doesn't work out, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He, dude, he's getting overconfident. Just let him cook. He's getting overconfident. <laughs> Oh, there, God. There's a mangano right there. He's going to lose the... Tamate, back away, dude. You've got this. You're on the way to Imp. You don't need to force the issue here. He's canceled it. it. He thought about building an outpost. And okay, they back away. Finally, Thank someone had that God. sense in that group. That was scary for a moment. What is this castle? I guess. I mean... Yeah, I mean... Just, you just got to get it off. So you can gather it again for another castle. Maginot's coming from behind. Maybe not the best place to have your villagers. Monks should be able to convert everything that Dream has here. The rams are now in. Two rams shouldn't be enough, but it is happening. You have monks with redemption. You can just go convert the rams. Yeah, or he made a couple knights. Or knights, so yeah. just use that, yeah. And, and honestly... Now the, whole, the whole community is being converted here yeah. from Dream. You're losing your blacksmith. You're going to lose your market. This is going to be the second time he's lost a market at a crucial stage in the series. He should have built the ones he used as a wall earlier. 
thinking about it. Hey, look, Tomate has made rams. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Dream made rams. They are now his. He owns the siege workshop and he owns the rams. He owns and the whole street. Even worse. That's right. Oh, God. All of these crossbows oh, are not in a good spot. Oh, oh my God. God. I mean, he's I'm feeling surprised it. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. Well, he's feeling it. He's just got to fall back to his castles, bring in his knights here. Tomate's a god. Look at this micro. Wasteful. Avoidable. That was, you know what? That was very good, considering the situation he was in. Yeah. This whole game's been great, dude. This whole game's been fantastic, except for letting that army in in feudal. Beyond that, mm -hmm. he's been on top of it ever since. We have a castle panic castle back. from Dream in the back. And Cas extremely casual 43 villagers building a castle. While his opponent's an imp. He's got nothing yeah. on gold. He will get this castle up, but he will lose the forward castle. He will lose his TCs. He will lose everything. And I think Dream's looking at this right now thinking, holy crap, this guy's actually really, really good. Yeah, really and good. And <laughs> my, my ladder ranking doesn't mean anything right now. What if I lose yep. this, you know? Yep. We're going to go to a game five. I and mean, this was just a sick game from Tomate. Really, really nice. Yeah, Tomate, I, I would love for someone to look it up for me, but I think he won round three last silver as well. I think he won 3-1 versus Survivalist. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I think he won 2-1 in the best of three versus Survivalist. Then he lost round three. So this would be his biggest tournament result, if my memory's correct. What's your uh, what's your win condition here if you dream from this position? You see your opponent has three TCs, right? You, you don't Double have castle one. in front. Yeah, you don't really have you one. down. You, you okay. play on to calm your nerves, basically. Like, we've seen <laughs> more so in silver than, than any event recently, and I think it's just because there's a lot of players who aren't playing tournaments. You're seeing a lot of people play on, like, well past the point of being completely dead. Yeah. The only I mean, real high-level player that does it, and it gets bad these days, is Yo, right? Yo. ACCM, dude. Uh, ACCM as well, yeah, it's true. ACCM will be down on that 40 pop, like, grinding it out, you know? <laughs> Uh, I mean, Cavalier's kind of an interesting opening, right? I mean, if he still had Crossbowman, he probably would be on Arbalest for now. So Tomate only has Cavalier with the first armor upgrade. But he's going to trep down that castle. There's no way, at least from what I'm seeing, that, that Dream is going to be able to stop his castle from going down. He's made a lot of Latest, though. And Lightcap. Latest are strong. They are strong. Yep. But not elite, right? He's still in Castle Age. Only 13 plus 2. He took another relic? Or no, he took the relic on the side there with the monastery. The monk goes down there. I like what Dream's trying to do. He's trying to send units over to the main eco of Tamate. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Tamate is not taking the bait, right? He defends from it where he can, but he always has things to protect his trebs. So a ram latest push against all these trebs and castles is unlikely to work. This is one of those games where if you're in Tomate's position, you're like, God, why haven't I killed him yet? I'm, I'm playing so bad. But it's really just his refusal to resign yeah. at this moment. Like, he doesn't he doesn't have that much he can do. He's raiding at the back with Lightcap, which is great. But once he loses that castle, wide open for the push. And just keep making your Cavalier. Or keep making your Pikeman or whatever. And keep the Trebs pushing forward. Yeah, there's, you might get one Treb here if you're Dream, but you've lost your castle now. All your rams are going to go down, and this is definitely that GG moment. It's Tomate, who's already made a line of three castles. A real statement piece here is going to make a fourth castle towards the middle. And it's going to go up. It's absolutely going to go up. He's going to lose Vils before it goes up, because Tomate is just focused on other things. But that castle will probably complete this game. Mm -hmm. And it's a worrying sign for Dream. If you're still playing right now, it's a worrying sign. I think there's some crazy nerves right now for both. I mean, he is killing villagers, so there's that, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. The fish traps in the north. He's old, guys. He's 34 years old. <laughs> we can't judge him based on those, okay? Okay. Dave just found out this guy was 34 an hour and a half ago. <laughs> You've already mentioned it three times. <laughs> I mean, look at those fish traps. They're fine. Only age. They're Only fine. Age. It's called it's called APM priority, dude. All right? These are like Chris fish traps. No, they're not even that bad. Having seen APM Tim... priority. Dude, APM priority, it's easier to put put them around the dock now because you can sit on top of them. It's no, but literally you have to, you have to click them, them an correct. extra time with that to get them 
like on top of the fish trap. No, you don't. You could just shift click it and they'll, they'll find their way. <laughs> They're really good at that. <laughs> I'll take your word for it on that. Dave is 33, so he, he's he's got the APM to be able to do it. Yeah. We don't have any fish trap. We, what do you think of the fish traps in the south from Dream right now? Better? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, game's still not over yet for some reason. Dream is going to take out a castle on the right? There's no way that no, castle should ever go down. Not. Come on, Tamate. No, Come on, man. You've got this. You've got pikes. You've got organs. He's making crossbows again. He's kind of made everything. Oh, there's another ram. He is going to take it down. There's another <laughs> ram coming. Quick, convert the rams. <laughs> but, like, for what? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing if here. There there's was... just villagers exposed to everything. If he had anything more than pikemen over here. Yeah. Chemistry's coming in. Bracer's coming in. Some upgrades Tamate probably needed. Dream yeah. might be thinking, like, Let's make him earn this one. Let's tire him out a little bit. Maybe he saw his liquidity profile an hour ago, just like Dave did. Saw it was 34. I don't know how old <laughs> Dream is, so we have to look that up now. But uh, <clears throat> no, maybe he's got a little bit more youth and thus the fist traps. But, uh, you know, Dream, my friend, the Dream is not dead for you, but th this game is officially over, right? I'm not seeing much from you. Actually, is he has he dropped? He dropped. If you look at APM. He must have. Yeah. yeah, he must have. Well, I mean, they could try or and restore it. Or he's just griefing to the maximum extent <laughs> right he now. He went to get water, yeah. <laughs> like, he definitely he definitely only dropped it. No, he didn't drop. He just was all tabbed. He calls GG. Yeah, I mean, could have just sat there, looked at it, and yeah. tried to motivate himself for what's to come. I don't know, but game's over. Well played from Tamate. The real difference for me here, man, was Tamate's early Castle Age opening. And we saw such a difference from game three to game four with him. In game three, he killed Vils, but he didn't have the economy. In this game, he killed Vils, and he had the economy to back it up. He played up towards Imp with beautiful timings on everything. I think we also saw Dream not get the type of game that he wanted. Complacency, dude. Yeah. It was complacent. Like, he made some army, and then he's like, ah, this guy can't. Can't do damage. Thing. Yeah. And he, he didn't have great food eco to make knights. He wasn't on knight skirm. He was just on crossbows. So, you know, the Lithuanian advantages didn't really pay off. And I guess that's kind of nice with Portuguese, right? No matter what happens in the game, if, if you need to make knights, cheaper. Crossbows, cheaper. Monks, ships, all of that is cheaper. And you're probably going to take your berries as well. So all those bonuses flowed quite nicely there. <laughs> all right. Well, it, it's been a great series. After the first game, I was a little concerned. Because you and I had two choices on what to cast at this time, right? And I was like, it's got to be Tamate and Dream. And, uh, you know, Dream took game one pretty convincingly. And then it's been back and forth ever since. So uh, Dream, the 22-year-old we've just checked from Chile, playing as the Berbers here, a civilization we think is preferred in this matchup. But Tamate has the Magyars, and Magyars can be incredibly aggressive. So I'm cheering for the old man. Okay. Of course. Uh, and the underdog as well, as old men constantly are. And I think that he can pull it through, through his experience. But Dream's been, a, Dream's been probably in more high-level games than Tamate has, because he's been around for a very, very long time. Yeah. I Even think though he's only 22. The, the big thing I'm going to look for here is where do they lumber camp? Because most yep. players are making their first lumber camp at the bottom. And Magyars have the cheaper scouts. And if Tamate can have a really good build up and get the early scout numbers and tower that wood line, there's just nowhere else to go for Dream. And mm -hmm. you ha even if you wall in your Vils, the second the tower's up, you have to run home, which is up a hill. I think that's your potential here if you're Tamate. But that requires scouting, that requires timing, and obviously sending villagers across the map is a bit of a risk as well. I wonder uh, if. Anything but scouts is ever pot like is Drush or Men at Arms possible on this map, or is it just you're too far away? I think it's possible. I just think players are too comfortable going for scouts. Mm. Um I think uh, there, I think it's civ dependent. Like if you are in a situation where you're up against a better scout civ and you have uh wood savings, like maybe Malians you could try it. Maybe Japanese you could try it. But the problem is players draft for this map in particular. And it's like, the other thing too is scout civilizations aren't early civs that you draft. So you're always going to have some available. It's not like, oh God, everyone picked Magyars in the first two rounds. 
or the opponent picked Madgars. It's usually you're going to have one of them. But it is okay, early questions days. Questions have been answered um, where they're going to lumber camp. And the lumber camp is there from Tamate. Yep. He's been discovered already. And he's coming out with his scout. And he's probably going to find the lumber camp here from Dream. And that oh, lumber dude. camp from Dream, well, that's that's going to be pretty exposed here. Tamate must have been tempted there to attack that one vill because it's not yeah. lubed. But I don't think you want to lose your scout. I HP. don't think you can. No, no. Okay, so it's confirmed to be a scout buildup for Dream because of the three on wood. He could switch some more to wood, but usually scouts. Four on wood is really rare for a scout build. So this could actually be just Man at Arm Tower for Tamate. Magyar is getting the forging upgrade doesn't mean they have to play in towards cheaper scouts. Mm -hmm. It could also just be on the Man at Arms. You have, I mean, it could be you You have to walk a long way for the Lumber Camp, and he went out a little bit too late, so he put a fourth one yeah, on there yeah, too. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Like, it I, could just be on-the-fly adjustments, right? I think you could still pull off a solid scout timing if you have four on wood. It's not... Yeah. doesn't mean everything. But it's usually he's one pop two more slower. villagers though. That's man he's gonna at arms. go up twenty pop. He's going. He's going man at arms. If that's if he's adding these bills. Okay. Okay. And he's disrupting the deer push here from Dream. And we saw how much how many problems he had pushing in deer on fortified clearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, push not, it away. Not bad for a thirty-four year old, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, my that's so knows, annoying. Listen, my man knows how to protect his deer. All right. Yeah, man. And look at this from Dream. So Dream's going to oh, go for a running. second lumber camp. Yeah, Deer is not cooperating at all, which means he's not going to scout the front. Yep. You busy. know this is man-at-arms because it's, the barracks is being panicked a little bit with two vills and because you have vills headed to gold. Just let this thing go. You have so many sheep and cows <laughs> underneath. Now you're taking a hit. Is it worth it? And he's, look, he's still, he's still trying to push it in. <laughs> what the hell? In his mind, he should... Oh, the deer! Where's the deer going? He got shot now. Okay. Oh, my God. This is... Oh, no. <laughs> Fifth game in oh, a best of five, and this is what's happening. Look, and he's coming out with a bill. He's like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> he just kills it. That was a misclick, though. There's no way he wanted to just kill that thing. There's no way. There's no way, dude. What a disaster. I, honestly, things are a little awkward here with Dream's timing, but if he is futile first... He's going to have the he, the time where his scout's the other side faster. Of the wood line. I think he goes on the other side of the wood line because he's already scouted this area, right? No, he's no, going No, he comes here. back through the center. That's good scouting. you got to check but the he front. Might, he might he <gasps> might miss the barracks, Tristan. Oh, he, sees <gasps> oh, he found it. Okay, so now, so, so this is where it gets interesting, right? Because you can wall out the man-at-arms. And you're actually kind of happy that you scout this now because you say, okay, Magars aren't playing in towards cheap scouts. This is also nice, too, because for now, your scout's stronger than the Magyar scout. Mm-hmm. But if mm -hmm. the Vills You're come, have to hug those militia. Like, if the Vills show up and drop a tower, you you have to counter tower or something. And man, the deer really have not been well liked here in this game. No, they haven't. He's like, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Shoo. Stables coming up for Dream. He wants to make those scouts, and there come the Vills from Tamate. So this is good, but economically, this this has to pay off, I think, because the two lumber mm -hmm. camps. The scout play, it's, it's just so much less investment. It's harder to get away with what Tamate's doing right now. Yep. He got a nice little hit with the Spearman. Downhill hit on the scout. That Magyar scout is now very weak. Militia is still wondering what to do, and they're going to support the villagers on the tower. Okay. okay. Now, okay. villager gets spotted. Now, normally, if you can, you build a counter tower to this, if you dream. You can't really do that, because you have your villagers split up. Tamate's lost his scout. He's dropping the tower. The man-at-arms upgrade is in, but the units are not together. And the spearmen are not there yet from Tomate. Loses a villager already. Does get that palisade wall. The quick walls from him have been on point, actually, mm -hmm. in this series. What a good decision from runs. Dream. He just says, okay, let's not play any games here. I have to leave before the man-at-arms are in position. He leaves. He'll drop another lumber camp. He's going to have four scouts, soon to be five, and the man-at-arms have done nothing. I think Tomate is Tomate... really struggling. He deleted that tower, and he still has 153 stone left. Oh, he good can go point. for another tower. But that means Dream can also just come right back to this wood line. Just do, point. do me a quick favor. Look at Tamate's eco. He's got three on the lumber camp. He's got no wood for the mining camp on gold. This looks He's like a about migration to finish build sheet. order yeah. on Nation's Cup. Like, he's literally long-distance mining yep. that gold. 
Does take out a scout, but can't quite get another one. Loses all the spearmen and men at arms. And now, oh boy. It's like, where do you, where do you go with these vills? He centered his whole strategy around denying the wood line. And he's like, I uh, guess we play defense now. Now, no eco upgrades for either player. But if I, Tamate is so heavily on straggler trees, it might be a Tuesday right now. So like this guy, he's going to need to sort something out there. Maybe he's able to do something with Spearman and an Archer or two. He's still keeping the Vils forward. He's going to take gold there, which is Spearman interesting. Spearman have forging. You better watch out. And it's it's a defensive tower there Okay. From Dream on the berries. Okay. Interesting. Dream, Dream also couldn't do damage on the wood line. He's underneath Tamate's TC. He's nervous. Both players are. Oh, they're in shambles, dude. Yeah, this is this is like real scrappy. Look at the food eco for Dream as well. Like it's not it's Ooh. not pretty. He's not making any more scouts after this one. He towered his berries. I mean, that should tell you <laughs> enough, right? Like Oh boy. I guess he's on stone though, so he can go for another tower. Yeah. Maybe expecting a further follow-up here. And remember, Tomate. in this matchup, if the game the longer the game goes, the better it is for Berbers. So, you know, you have the faster vills, which helps your eco. You've got the cheaper stable units against the stave that's known for making knights. Oh my god, dude, get this wood situation sorted out. It's giving me anxiety, bro. Like, look at this. Look at this TC. <laughs> it's all so bad. But give credit to Tamate because he's he, he knows that wood could be a long-term issue for Dream. And, you know, he's forced down another very defensive tower on this hill for Dream. And, and the tower on the berries is less than ideal. That's because of the aggression. The tower there on the stone and wood, also I'd say less than ideal. All due to this aggression Smate's putting on. I mean, at least he doesn't. If there's a silver lining, oh, big he moment. Have Other side wood line. Quick wallet. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm quick wallet. At it. Dream got I'm real close, it. so the quick walls couldn't I'm come in. Villagers exposed. Oh my god. That was really interesting from Dream, right? Because he took a couple extra hits, so he could get in closer there. Mm -hmm. And Smate is unable to kill any villagers this game. It is 3-0 eco KD for Dream. It's about to be a fourth, so he's up in economy. And he has the better sieve. And I'm just wondering where Spearman and where the archers even go now because of where these towers and walls are positioned for Dream. It's still, these villagers are still taking, like, yeah. Like I was saying, at least he doesn't have double bit axe, so the villagers have to walk less because they're dropping slower. <laughs> <laughs> that is looking for a silver lining. Dave, Dave has probably used that so many times to uh, <laughs> to to make him feel Justify. better about missing double bit axe. <laughs> oh, I always I always get double bit axe. It's horse collar. Yeah, that's the problem. The skirms are on the way out for Dream. Normally, what you'd want here, if you're Tomate, is you want the eco to shift into those scouts, right? But uh, you know the the eco idle time's been higher for him. The worker or. Yeah, and then the worker efficiency overall has been lower. <laughs> I love the wall on the north side of Dream's base, like the north, the left of his TC. He's walled to the rock. Oh, it's a fake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a fake wall. Kills another villager on that wood line, Dave. Dream has done such a good job. Like spearmen have been out there for Tomate, but he no. isn't able to find the areas, and he doesn't play on. Oh no. Oh, I think. I mean, considering how long Dream played on in game four. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see Tamate play on a little bit longer. He's definitely behind, right? And I think it's it's like 70-30 for Dream right now. But uh, still, he maybe just felt like this is impossible. Uh, he, he did have exposed villagers in the middle that were just found and were probably about to be killed. But a crazy series nonetheless. I hope Tamate isn't too disappointed. And, uh, you know, we said it. I think Dream learned some valuable lessons today. On Fortify Clearing, he learned some lessons. And he's going to have to tweak some of the uh, ways he plays some of the maps he lost on here. Yeah, it's just... Imagine if Dream, instead of going left of the woodline with a scout there, after he, the deer debacle, yep. he went right yep. of the woodline and didn't see that barracks. And then suddenly, all sorts of surprises right coming forward with the men at arms and with the tower and whatnot but it seems like he was just so good once he moved the woodline villagers back to his main plateau and tomate he just didn't know what to do against mm -hmm. he had yeah. no idea and I, I think he went if anyone's thinking why go man at arms and towers with magyars why do that it's not scouts it's scouts is what they're good at well it's because of the matchup and he just knows like okay i i'm probably not going to kill as much with scouts because he expects it 
I and know camel. Then it's in Castle Age. I just died of cheap camels. Yeah. So he tweaked his whole ideal game game plan for his sieve based on his opponent's sieve here, and it it all came down to early feudal there, which Dream played very well. Um, and he made that look easy too. Like a lot of people, they try and make a defensive tower on the wood line. They they don't leave the wood line. They stay there and they're stubborn with it. But he took no risks. Um, good series though. I, I really like Tamate. I hope we uh, you know with with more tournaments happening all the time. I hope we see more of the guy because he's he might not be like that ranked Arabia player, but that's not what we need more of in Age of Empires too. Mm -hmm. We need more guys who are good on mixed maps, and I think he he's one of them. So tournament people, yeah, just like mixed tournament settings, right? Yep. There are Arabia tournaments too, so maybe there he wouldn't do as well. But all right, good series, man. Um. Wasn't part of our plan initially getting on today, but I saw you casting the series earlier. I wasn't even sure if I would cast today, and then I saw the schedule. I was like, let's go. I've actually covered quite a bit of Silver League, I think. Yeah, I've, I've been breezing through your sets. VODs. I've been, I've been, I've been enjoying busy. it. I'm looking, the one I'm looking forward to is tomorrow. Jibatong against John Slow. <laughs> John Slow <laughs> played so well, dude, against um, TQ or TU. Kui or T whatever? Yeah, I don't know how to say him. The, the I call Vietnamese him TQ. Guy. TQ? I okay. call him TQ. He played so well against him. Like, his transitions were on point. He was obviously slow. But, like, he won Ghost Lake and Kilimanjaro. He didn't even need to get to Fortify Clearing against them. Yeah. Yeah, I saw how... I, I watched um his VOD as well and saw how happy yeah. he was and how pumped he was. Yeah. So, okay, let's... um. I'm just going to briefly talk through some of these sets that are coming up because we're like really close to the conclusion of this some whole sick silver ones. bracket. Yeah, we got some really good ones. Um, in group A, Fire of course Fire. hasn't played yet. <laughs> Fire hasn't played yet. Yeah, we don't we don't know if it's going to be something played. I don't know. Listen, yet. all I all I know is admin decisions are in the works. We got to figure something out there. But uh, so we'll see what happens there. Blackheart's waiting for whoever he plays against. Cloud Samaro will be interesting. Samaro made it to gold last time, and then was yeah. relegated. I like Cloud a lot as a player. I'm he thinking. He didn't look fantastic though against Tom. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, you brought up the age thing earlier. I think Cloud's got, you know, he's been around a long time. You know, uh, he doesn't really have the the speed, but he does have the strats. So that should be fun. Uh, moving down to Group B, you've got Say My Name versus Survivalist. Say My Name. I mean, the fact that he was relegated in season two, season one. I don't know. <clears throat> actually i think it was relegated out of gold this past yeah. season so say um, my name say my name should beat survivalist i think he might have been in nilly's group where it was like so close yeah yeah he was he was really good and and say my name like he barely got relegated out of plat the first season i don't know mm -hmm. how much he's been playing but i think that should be survivalist should go in with with low expectations and any wins he gets he'll, he could be feeling proud um yeah genuinely believe that whoever Target faces this should be worried about target. Target's a beast. Oh, I I had either him or say my name winning the group, but I, I think I had say my name. Yeah, yeah. it's a safe I, bet. I just like I I feel like so many people just underestimate this guy. And say my name is not playing Age of Empires two on a regular bit. Like half the time I tune into his stream, he's playing a we a we won. Yep. Or he's he's doing something else. Like the guy is really good. Yeah. Honestly, but the thing that is kind of interesting is target. I feel is also underrated and he and some of these He's, i don't know if it's all german guys but some of these guys are like really training a lot mm -hmm. um so i could see him getting a win because say my name is probably not gonna have the strats obviously we'll see what survivalist has against him um okay so spoilers i didn't mean to spoil myself but too late it's happened he won i guess i think it's happening right now it might be in game oh, it's three the best of five yeah Ooh, yeah so uzi i had as my favorite in that entire group, he's currently up, and then well, uh, it might already be over. I don't see them online anymore on Spec Dashboard. Okay, so three O Uzi maybe, which Nahuel is amazing, but Uzi is playing amazing. So Nili Cello will be good. I don't know when that's happening, but I think Nili, with how he's looked, will be the favorite, especially in a best of five. Matador Dave Hun in Group D. I'm I'm like I, I'm very close with Matador, and I have tons of belief in the dude. Uh, but it will be a fun series because Dave likes the closed maps and Matador hates the closed maps. <laughs> he, he's been practicing them, but, um, you know, it's just not his thing. So that should be a fun series. 
But that, like yeah. now at that point, we're in round four. So in the round of 22, whoever wins there qualifies. So that'd be big for them. What do you think about uh, Overtaken? Well, Overtaken Alive, I think we have to lean towards Overtaken. Yeah, I'm looking at Overtaken White Court there, but Salted Pepper, that's a big result against Andre. Yeah. And I know... That's an unexpected one for sure. Like he went from like 1900 to 2K, 2K1, and he's been playing a lot of training games from what I hear. So I don't know what type of shape White Court's in, but yeah, White Court is... Here's a reason he was in gold last time. So he should be favored there. Oh, dude, this group F is nuts, though. Casva Monos, which should just be, even if it's not a closed series, it should be entertaining. Mm -hmm. And then Ozone and Beery should be a sick series. I think. I want to I wanna see. I just want to watch the Beery games because Beery is very entertaining. Yeah, he Kazva should Kazva should win this. So I saw what form he was in. He looked he looked good. Yeah, he, when he played against Uno, he looked really good. And Kazva's playing a lot right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Beery made it to the decider last time. So the fact that you know a guy who's known for playing Mongols, Gurjaras, Celts, whatever flavor of the month one trick on the ladder, <laughs> um, he's really good in these. And of course, we have Group G, which we just covered and talked about. Group H, uh, Bad Koala and Cyclops. I think I would lean towards Bad Koala. I think John Slow is going through. Yeah, John Slow. <laughs> no, I would, dude. I would pop off if he did. I would love <laughs> nothing more than having John Slow in uh, in Titans League, where every game matters. It's not a best of, yeah. and you have like hideout in the pool, right? <laughs> Like, he imagine plays. the headache for the players in his group. Like, all he needs to do is win one game out of every set, and he's already upset the entire group, <laughs> right? Yeah, he plans his whole draft around the one game. Yeah, yeah, and, like, whoever gets him in their group, it's just so unlucky. It's just I think, so unlucky. I think if it was best of three versus Jibitong, maybe. Best of yeah. five is going to be tough. There's only going to be so many maps that he's comfortable with. Uh, yeah. And then if he beats Jibitong... <laughs> which I'd be, I'll be rooting for the guy as well. I think Bad Koala or Cyclops will have something to say. Yeah. Um, group I's, you have Stark, who uh, is looking to get back into gold. Uh, apparently didn't play his round two, so I don't know how he's playing right now, but I know his ranking's really high on Arabia, at least. Uh, and I then think Clement. Clement. A good pick for this, uh, this, for this group. group. Yep. Yeah. I'm thinking like Clement and Stark... Could yep. maybe be the final there. Uh, oh God, FedEx Group and Group J Jack? is tough, Whew. and Sis Siscon as well. Yep, in the bottom side. Ooh. And then, and then Hope is what uh, most English speaker speaking casters call the Vietnamese name there, mm -hmm. who played well last time too. Yeah, that that group's really competitive. And then, dude, who that who even knows in Group K? Who knows? Like, yeah, I, <laughs> this is like the weirdest group. Yeah, like once after hearing Yo speak so highly of Ming, and then seeing I Ming was two K five. Yeah, I, I just assumed Ming through. would just destroy everybody. Yeah. So I told Eli, I was like, "Dude, if you beat Ming, you can beat every anyone." And uh, so eh, maybe a little USA action here. He's he made it further than me, <laughs> so we'll see what Eli can do. And the Z forty guy from Taiwan, like he's been around forever. Yeah. But I've never really seen him play tournaments. Prisma and Pella from Argentina, they've been around a long time. But I didn't watch Pella, but I did watch the Prisma Amalius set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I watched your bot on that. Good. Yep. Pretty decent. Daniel, Daniel's laughing at me right now. I made the American joke. Um, he Daniel's saying Z40 beats Prisma. Okay. Okay. So Daniel knows a lot about him. But anyways, that's that's kind of what's up. Um, so basically it's the conclusion of this week is supposed to be round three, which is the best of five. And then the conclusion of the following week leading up towards the 29th and 30th is end of silver. And then it's like that very next week, gold begins. Okay. And the players that are promoted already start playing. And uh, yeah, things start to crank from there. So it should be good.